everyone can benefit from learning more about our surroundings. Mushrooms are just so darn cool. They are more like you and I than they are plants. They breathe in oxygen, they put out CO2. So we have to monitor and manage when we're actually growing or cultivating these. We would be a giant trash heap if we didn't have fungal organisms with us on the planet because they serve as really the main kind of decomposers along with bacteria of materials within the environment. There are mushrooms that taste like maple syrup and there's mushrooms that are sour and there's mushrooms that are so spicy they'll contend with any pepper. There are blue mushrooms and spiky mushrooms and you just have to go out and look. I mean, they're right here. They're out in the woods where you live and you just need to go out and look for them and everyone can benefit from being more connected to our earth and uh, nature and the world we live in. I'm primarily the president of the Alabama Mushroom Society, so I go out and I find mushrooms. <laughs> That's what I do. Ever since I was a little kid, constantly in the woods, out canoeing and camping and hiking, and I love being outside. Most of what I'm involved in is just data collection. We have about half of everything we've sequenced out of Alabama is not on record as being described. Alabama probably has better fungal diversity than anywhere else in the United States. I have a spot over here that chanterelles pop up. Okay, here's a chanterelle. Here's some babies. Oh yeah, here, look. One of the defining characteristics of chanterelles is that they don't have page-like gills like many mushrooms do. And these have a real pretty kind of peach top to them. You're looking at the the cap, the gills, how it attaches to the stipe, how far spaced out they are, the odor, the taste on some mushrooms, what it's growing from, uh, what trees are in the area. When you cut it in half, what's it look like? Does it change colors? A lot of things I take home and have to get under the microscope. You can't tell without checking the, what the spores look like and measuring them and comparing the microscopic information. Some things you just have to send off in sequence. I think what really piques a lot of students' curiosity with respect to fungi is to just be, be able to walk out in nature and, and, and kind of look for mushrooms and look for other types of exotic types of fungal organisms that are associated within the environment. I'm Dr. Kevin Keene. I'm a professor of biology at the University of Southern Mississippi. My main lab is interested in identifying the fungal community associated with uh, samples within the environment to be able to use molecular tools to assess what kind of fungal organisms are there. That kind of technology has really exploded our understanding of the microbiome of fungi. What we're trying to do is trying to understand the fungal microbiome as well as the bacterial microbiome that exists in intermittent streams and how they ultimately affect the stream and affect water quality. In this one stream system we're studying in Kansas, we have 8,000 different taxa that are showing up of fungi. So there's so much diversity out there that's unexplored, and this is just one stream system, let alone the entire continent or the entire world. From an evolutionary perspective. Fungi were once thought to have evolved from plants, but we know now that uh, the fungi are more closely evolved from animals. There, there's just so much that we don't know. I mean, so many other sciences are centuries ahead of mycology. So, I mean, that's, that's my personal interest. It is, it's an, an unstudied field, I mean, essentially, in, in the terms of other sciences, there's a lot to discover. I lead a monthly foray for Alabama Mushroom Society where I just take people out in the woods and, and help them identify mushrooms and talk about mushrooms and answer their questions. And we just go out and see what we can find and you know try and, try and teach them how to document mushrooms and pique their interest. So this is a member of Amanita section Phalloidea, 
Um, these are the destroying angels. So it's only poisonous if you eat it? I can chew it up and spit it out, and as long as I don't swallow it, it's fine. And what it'll do if I were to eat this mistakenly, I would feel a little nauseous, I might throw up for a little bit, I would recover, seem to be fine, and then about two weeks later, my liver would completely liquefy, and unless I had a liver transplant, I would die. Anything you read online about, oh, well, you can boil it with a quarter, and if the quarter turns black, there's no easy trick. You have to learn the couple of toxic species in your area. There's no shortcut. You, you gotta learn it. We have an Alabama mushroom festival, and it's a, a pretty big deal. We have lots of presenters, mycologists from all over the United States are coming to do presentations, and we have vendors vending all kinds of mushroom wares and things like that, and it's just a great place for people who are interested in mushrooms to get together and meet other people that are interested in mushrooms. Hey, good morning. The uh, golden and the pink oysters are obviously brings everybody to the table. Uh, my name is Martin Blair, and with my business partner, Jose Izaguirre, we are the Underground Forest. I've wanted to be a farmer for uh, many years. I wasn't raised as a farmer. While I still don't have the land, one of the things that I could use or do were mushrooms. And so we grow these in a chamber uh, downtown Tuscaloosa. Do you think you can grow your own? That's one of these bags what? right here. Yeah, a mushroom. And that's a mushroom. How many requirements does it take to grow a mushroom? All you have to do is take a bag, put an opening on it, turn it upside down, soak it in a plate full of water for about three hours, and then just set it on top of your counter with the uh, cut open up. And within seven to 14 days, you'll actually have mushrooms ready to harvest. There's going to be two looks on people's faces when they walk up to the table. There's going to be like a, what in the world is that look? And then there's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it's here. All right, natural flavors, cooking in olive oil or in butter. Again, these guys will taste like chicken, grilled chicken tenders. This will be a nutty almond flavor. And this will be like crab cake or I mean, crab or lobster meat. It's amazing all the different types of flavors that they have naturally and what you can infuse them with. We sell local restaurants as well. Within two hours of harvesting, it's in the hands of the chefs. Overall, the community has responded greatly and people are so interested and in wanting to know and just absorbing all the information that we're able to throw at them. All these mushrooms are taking care of nature. One will dispose of it, others will help them grow. It's a beautiful relationship they have. There's lots of species that rely heavily on fungi. If we had the earth and we just, fungi are gone, 95% of land plants would be gone too. If it wasn't for mushrooms of all the different varieties, uh, we would be thousands of feet of trees and uh, other materials that would just be on top of planet Earth. Uh, so it's amazing their job and their responsibility just to decompose. We need more people to get interested in studying fungi and learning about the importance of fungi within the environment. You know, discover fungi that might be able to degrade plastics, that may be able to degrade, you know, rubber new age antibiotics, right? New age metabolites that could help. Document what's there because, you know, there's only so many mycologists and if it wasn't for citizen scientists going out there and, I mean, there's been whole species described by amateurs taking pictures and posting them on social media and saying, this is cool, what's this? We need boots on the ground and that means people like us.